Hey folks, I'm Lance Eaton and I am doing this video on five tips about using AI in uh, tutoring and tutoring centers. So if you want to know more about me or get more information uh, about the work that I do, please check out the description for links to different resources. So we've got a lot of ground to cover here and these are our main objectives. Uh, we're going to go through these pretty quickly. So just, you know, there's a lot of things to follow up on and you can do check out so much of this in the resource document uh, that's listed there that will also be in the uh, description below uh, and in it you'll find lots of different resources prompts uh, responses from generative ai and it's all covered by a creative commons license so you're of course welcome to share that uh, and adapt and borrow as makes sense and of course give credit where credit is due okay our first focus is to start thinking about how we might be using this in the context of our work what are some of the things we need to be thinking about? What is our, our framework for using generative AI in tutoring? So tutoring centers are, at many campuses are building the bridge to academic success for students who are grappling with some part of their education. They are, they are creating the connections that the institution has yet to sufficiently build with their students so that the students can thrive. They are at the forefront of student support, insight, and learning, trying to figure out things and think about how to support the individual needs of the student across an array of disciplines, needs, and structural limitations. Given that, the tutoring center staff should consider how generative AI can both help their work as individuals and enhance, enhance the work of the center and help students themselves. So what do we mean by that? The tutoring center has an opportunity to frame what generative AI can be and how to use that. Within that, they can actually recommend generative AI tools that are, are pretty helpful for students, including things like Grammarly, as well as some of the AI tools that support doing research. As importantly, you can help students identify beneficial uses of these tools, ways that enhance their work, help them to learn, and even give them feedback when tutors aren't available. With that comes also the responsibility to highlight the educational concerns that generative AI represents for their instructors, but also for themselves and where they might be short shrifting their own learning, growth, and development. This is why the tutoring center really needs to think about, use, and engage with these tools. They can create space to talk about misuse and provide guidance in one-on-one -on -one settings or workshops, or the judgment of use or concerns about being graded by the messenger is not at stake, right? That as tutors and not as the instructors, there's, a, there's more opportunity for useful conversation there. Uh, because it's not just identifying misuse, but also helping students to understand the limitation of AI actually in their own work. Finally, there's a framework to explore and develop that examines AI as co-pilot. What does it mean to have tutors engage with AI to help their own development and means of supporting students? Of course, there's also considering what it means to begin to look at AI as a tutoring tool that students can begin to use, and maybe it becomes you know, something that uh, to get AI feedback first before getting human feedback. What might this mean for changes in practice? For instance, with writing, it could reduce the superficial elements uh, that, that tutors sometimes have to work with or work through with, with students and allow the deeper conversation about writing. And lastly, what might it look like to see AI, the tutor, and the student as a team working together? Okay, but what about how we're using it now or how we might be? Of course, if we're going to bring that framework to our campuses, we have to get familiar with and comfortable with generative AI. To that end, we have to be playing with it and getting comfortable. So this is where we start to do that. What, is, what are some of the ways you can start doing that? Well, there's low hanging fruit that you can easily get comfortable with, get familiar with and start to share those uses. This might include having generative AI produce date listings or initial communications you, you want to send out. It can also be getting quick visuals without ceaselessly searching. Uh, as well as refine content and create basic outlines to projects that you want to pursue or that you're working on. As you get settled into using it, there are some more things that I think, and I think this is where it gets really interesting. You can use it to customize t t tip sheets for tutoring staff or learning guides for students. You can also use it to start producing content for professional development and training uh, that you're doing with faculty or students. And with the different emerging video, audio, and image tools, you it could also be used to make some room for more content creation by the tutoring center, who often don't have 
uh, either the budgets or the skills to do that with the, the range of tools out there. Finally, there's some real possibilities about figuring out a solid workflow among student, the AI, and the tutor. One of those ways that I've been thinking about playing and seeing is this idea of creating personas, crafting an AI, crafting AI tools to be a persona. Consider, consider this, tr this for training tutors. What would it mean that they could do a series of simulations and communication back and forth with an AI posing as a struggling student? That could profoundly help a tutor, tutor get more proficient before they become, uh, before they become the tutor that they're going to be working with students, uh, before they get that direct interaction with students. Uh, there could be opportunities for them to learn and reduce the potential mistakes they're going to make when they are working with regular, with, with actual students. And of course, there's always this potential for using it to make sense of data to improve the tutoring experience. So what does it look like to use these tools with others, particularly students seeking help. Right off, there are some easy ways to be using these tools with students in the tutoring center. Using generative AI to create basic explainers in different styles can be helpful, but so can working with the student to show them how to best solicit useful explanations from AI. If a student has a particular passion, tell the student to use AI to explain a concept through that passion so that it can actually elicit really good connections. Right, this is a really cool thing of like if they're deeply interested in something, have them telling the AI that and using that as a grounding metaphor or an analogy maker in order for the person to better understand a subject. Along those lines, encouraging them to use it as an example generator to understand something or to think about a subject differently can further inform their learning and curiosity. Showing students that AI can do things like clarifying writing, adjusting style, and improving common mistakes. I mean, I for one will never get commas, and I've been a professional writer for uh, 22, 23 years. Um, these are also, you know, easy ways to get them to use it in really helpful ways, in ways that feel additive and not necessarily replacing the intellectual work that we want them to be doing. But I think the tutoring center can also help step up to be that hub in creative and sophisticated uses of AI by, by and with students. Running workshops or jam sessions where students share and learn more creative, engaging uses of AI both helps the students as well as the center to be more effectively, to be able to more effectively share out what they are seeing and learning. This also, this, there's also helping students create personas for themselves to play with and learn with. Uh, these tutors can be personas, subject, per, you know, could be tutor personas, subject personas, or personas of the type of people they might work with. For instance, uh, a client if they aim to be a social worker, or a, a student if they aim to be a teacher, a, cu a customer if they aim to be to to be a manager in business. At its core, the most useful the most useful thing here will be helping students to realize that in the center and beyond, there's real value and possibility in co-creating and learning with AI. It's an infinite question answerer and will smash together different ideas continuously that can empower students in ways that current education can't. Then we have what could be really powerful possibilities. Using the tool to generate automated feedback and even assess more, thereby more deeply preparing for the work to be done, not just in class, but in the world at large. Beyond that, there's the opportunity to guide students in building an ongoing iterative learning plan contextualized to their needs. And then, of course, the tutoring center can also be the place to help guide students to reimagine their future after college. Whatever their goals, uh, they can actually see and thoughtfully integrate these AI tools into whatever comes next. So. What are the practices we want to encourage and discourage with the use of generative AI? Particularly because we're still in this early stage in understanding all the implications of these tools, there's, some, there's a few things to keep in mind. If it's not evident yet, the tutoring center is the place to be talking about these tools. Some faculty are thoughtfully engaging with this, but not enough, and helping students think about them is imperative. Use your, your center's guiding philosophy about what it means to tutor to clarify and develop the balanced guidance for for both your tutors and students. Keep using it, play with it, playing with it with different tools. Uh, it will continue to change and you want to consider what that means for the work in your center. And of course, document your usage so that you can see your own changes, changing changes in usage, and also that you also make sure that you indicate that you're using it. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect citation, but you want to always make sure like if you're using it, you're letting people know. So things that you don't want to do, 
uh, it's really important that the center doesn't shame or dismiss students who use it, even if it goes against what the center or school believes in. Approach these conversations with curiosity and reflection. You can do a lot of damage to your center's ability to help students by not taking student usage seriously and with thought. Along those lines, don't hide that you're using. Normalize using it and talking about it. Help people under understand what it is, un unravel or, or discover new use cases, all of that. This is this is one of the, the most complicated for the tutoring center, especially because, you know, I spent a few slides using it in relation to student work. Let's deal with the data first. If you're using anonymous data, such as feedback surveys, I would be inclined to say it's safe to use. But if you're using other things that have students' private information, that's a no, right? So we want to be very mindful about how or what we put into AI, particularly around students. In terms of students' work, it's important to discuss the concerns about, about putting one's work into AI and let the student decide if they are okay with it. Ideally, students, uh, sorry, ideally institutions will start to have affiliations with AI companies that will also allow for more privacy. But you'll always want to have that, you always want to have that conversation and get that permission first. All right, so let's take a look at a couple specific prompts to get a sense of what all of this looks like. So these are four areas that I find AI to be incredibly useful in ways that will contribute to my work and reduces the amount of time I need to work on things. So we're going to take a look at each. One thing to note here is that I'm going to briefly show and talk about uh, a prompt for each of these approaches. What follows is several screens with lots of text. Don't race to read it all. That's not the goal. Rather, I just want you to get a sense of what the outputs are. All the prompts and the responses from Generative AI, that can be found in that resource document. So, you know, don't worry about trying to read everything on the screens. The next slides are mostly there just to give you a flavor of what can be done, uh, what can be done with Generative AI so that you can then go and explore the document and then go play uh, with the tools on your own. So helping to reduce tasks is something that I think about a lot and something that we could all benefit from. As an example in this prompt, I've asked AI to take the writing rubric from the AACNU's value rubrics and adapt it into an accessible rubric that a student might use to assess their own work. Right? That's what this prompt says here, is like make this rubric a little more accessible to uh, students being able to review and assess their own work. And at a first go, it's, it's all right. Uh, but more importantly, you know, while I would want to continue to tweak this, the initial transition from what was there to what is there now, it took me 10 seconds instead of 10 to 20 minutes. Right, so it really brought, it really allowed me to make this feel more useful than what was there, and very quickly. So when it comes to brainstorming, AI can definitely can identify a range of things that you might not have thought of, and therefore extend your thinking about what you might do or how you might do it. In this prompt, I asked AI to actually create a plan, uh, create a plan for a series of workshops that the center could hold for a New England co community college. I also made clear what to include with each workshop idea it generated, things such as the target audience, content overview, objectives, and more. The prompt is longer uh, th than what you see here, and it's also in the guide. But again, I just want you to get a sense of like, this is what I'm trying to ask it to do. And this is what it did. Uh, so you can see you can see the basics of the first three workshops it offered up. Again, more to be found in the guide. But what we have here is it gives us workshops on college success, academic writing, and networking, along with who are the ideal students for each of these, se these sessions and additional information like content overview and interactive elements. Again, things I could have done, but having AI do it got me there much faster that I can go back and edit, decide what I like, what I don't like, and go from there. So when we get to first drafting, this is where it gets really good. Uh, the iterative nature of AI is that I can ask it a question, I can ask it question after question. Um, I can say exactly what I did here, exactly what I did here is based off that last prompt in response. Uh, I asked it, you know, I wanna actually follow up on one of those workshops. In this case, I'm asking it to provide a more detailed explanation and support around a workshop, a workshop on resume writing and interview techniques. So that's basically what this prompt is asking. And again, this is a partial representation of the fuller point, but it's already given me plenty to work with and start adapting and adjusting for this workshop. The result is I'm not starting at ground zero, but much further along. It's giving me this rich outline. Uh, it gave me additional things um, in the fuller response.
Finally, there is using it for analysis. For this, I want to I wanted I wanted to find some tutoring center data, but unfortunately, uh, I couldn't do so. So uh, I'm using this as an example, but it could translate into the tutoring center. In this case, I took anonymous student evaluations. I double checked the data that the data uh, I double checked the data and removed any personal information, and then asked the AI to analyze the data to summarize, analyze, and provide insights and recommendations regarding faculty usage of the LMS. So again, that's what I'm asking in this prompt. And this is that short version, but I can show you the, the results are eye-opening and give me an opportunity to plan better for students and faculty. Uh, in my case, we get this feedback every four weeks from hundreds of students, um, and it's all qualitative. And so while I certainly will and can dig into uh, the data itself, given my, my skills in this area and the actual amount of time that I have, um, this is going to give me a much bigger head start that I can then further follow up and double check on things that, that come up in these uh, in these analyses. So those are the five tips for the session. We've covered a lot and in fact I actually also have one more bonus tip but again I just want to highlight that resources document is really where you can find a lot of great resources uh, in a lot of these prompts. But the bonus prompt, uh, the bonus tip is this prompt. Um, one of the, the first thing you should always ask generative AI is how to improve the actual question you want to ask. Uh, in this case, I usually start with this prompt. Improve this prompt to maximize the creativity and analytical abilities of a large language model, colon. So that's, that's what I put, and then I insert my prompt. And what I'm telling the AI to do is come up with a better prompt that works better, that works more effectively with large language models that power generative AI. The new prompt provides, you know, provides me with better results than what I would have gotten if I just asked my prompt, the, the prompt that I had. So that's all I've got for now. I hope this is helpful. I hope you check out the resources and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Thank you so much.